This is where we were during the GFC. And this is where we are right now. I'm going to explain why most of the data suggests that the banking crisis of 2023 is just beginning. Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank. Signature Bank marks the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. Let's start by going over the mysterious second central bank of the United States that nobody ever talks about. And I know right about now you're saying, wait a minute, George, the only central bank in the United States is the Federal Reserve. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Editor, let's cut right to the internet. We go straight to prospect.org. This post authored by a gal named Catherine Judge. I first heard Catherine on a podcast episode with Jack Farley, Forward Guidance Editor. Go ahead and throw it up. If you guys get a minute, I cannot recommend it enough. But the title of her post is The Problem Lender of Second to Last Resort. You guys have all heard that the Federal Reserve is the lender of last resort, but there's another quasi central bank out there that other banks go to when they get in trouble prior to going to the Federal Reserve. This second central bank is called the Federal Home Loan Bank System. Notice it's a system just like the Federal Reserve System, and it was set up by the government in 1932 to promote home ownership. And of course, we know whenever the government tries to promote home ownership, it never ends well. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Over the last 90 years, it has grown massively. A shocker that a government program would grow massively, while also morphing to serve the interests of giant financial institutions far more than homeowners. Wow. Again, shocker. There's unintended consequences of a giant, massive government program. But she goes on to say, even more troubling, the FHL bank system is now an entrenched lender of, well, second to last resort. Yet one that is even less accountable and public-minded than the Federal Reserve, which Congress created to serve as the lender of last resort during periods of stress. So basically, the Federal Home Loan Bank was set up to help small and community banks extend mortgages to the middle class back in the Great Depression. But what it has evolved into is, yes, a place for these big banks, regional banks, to get funding for mortgages, but it's also a stealth bailout because they can go there and pretend they're getting money for mortgages, but in reality, they're just getting that money to plug a massive hole in their balance sheet. Now let's go right back to the chart. It starts 2000, goes all the way to today's data on the left. We go from zero all the way up to 1.2 trillion. Now, these are the advances that are going out to the marketplace to other banks from the Federal Home Loan Bank. And they call loans advances for some reason. So just to be clear, to make sure we're on the same page, if the FHLB lends money to another bank, they call it an advance. So back in 2000, we were right around 400 billion and it goes up slightly, ticks up to about 600 billion because all these small, maybe community banks were going to the FHLB for their liquidity for these mortgages because the FHLB would take those mortgages as collateral. It was a very convenient resource for them. But look at what happened starting in 2007. It goes parabolic. Now note, I said 2007. I did not say 2008. Because editor, go ahead and throw up a chart, and we can see that the advances from the FHLB started going parabolic prior to Lehman Brothers and prior to Bear Stearns. So if you were someone that was really paying attention in 2007, you would have seen that GFC tsunami long before it hit the shore. Then we fast forward after the GFC, call it 2011, 2012, the mortgage business, the housing market started to pick back up and all of those community banks were going back to the FHLB for their liquidity needs. But then we see this big spike during the survey sickness, it goes all the way back down. But then what happens from Q1 of 2022, to Q4 of 2022. The exact same thing that happened in 2007. 
and you guys know exactly what happened in Q1 of 2023, we had Silicon Valley Bank go bust. We had First Republic go bust. We had Signature go bust. And as you can imagine, if you are paying attention to these advances in 2022, how they're going parabolic, like 2007, you would have had a very good idea. You would have been able to predict that the probabilities were very high that we would have a banking crisis in 2023. Oh, but wait, there is more. Editor, go ahead and throw up an Excel spreadsheet that I found on Twitter. And please do put up the person that posted this so we can give them credit. And I'd like you to note the top borrowers from the FHLB in 2022. Shocker, I know. Number one would be Signature, and not far behind would be Silicon Valley Bank, and of course, First Republic. So why would these troubled banks go to the second lender of last resort instead of going to the Federal Reserve? Well, it's actually very clever. You see, most of the lending done by the Federal Home Loan Bank is for these small community banks, private lenders, maybe credit unions. And they just go there because like we said earlier, they just need a little liquidity for these mortgages and they'll take those mortgages as collateral. It's expensive, but you know, that's okay. It's their best option. So if a Silicon Valley bank signature First Republic comes in and borrows from the same entity, the marketplace just assumes that they're going there to get liquidity for mortgages, not because they're about ready to go bust. So this brings us down to this key component of the video. You really need to get your head around this. I call it a risk waterfall. So when these troubled banks need liquidity, their first option, because it's way cheaper, is going to be the marketplace, the repo market, as an example. But they're very sophisticated lenders in the repo market, and they have to worry about losing money where a quasi-government agency does not. So the marketplace looks at Silicon Valley Bank and says, yeah, uh, no way. There's zero chance that I give you a loan because I know you're just about ready to go bust. So they go to their next best option, which like we said, would be the FHLB. But they really hesitate to do that because although it's this stealth bailout, it is very expensive and the terms quite often are very draconian, which is why the FHLB has never, ever lost a penny. But let's assume for a moment you go to the marketplace because you're one of these troubled banks and they first and foremost give you the old Heisman. They say, no way, Jose. So then your next option, kind of like this waterfall, is the FHLB. But then let's say you're so bad that they don't even want to do business with you. What do you do? Well, before you wave the white flag, you've got to go right down here and go to the ultimate lender of last resort, and that would be the Federal Reserve. You'd try to access a facility such as this new BTFP, which stands for Bank Term Funding Program. But the problem is once you make the leap from the second lender of last resort to the ultimate lender of last resort, there is stigma attached to that. It's very similar to someone whose credit score goes from 750 all the way down to 600. When they go back into the marketplace to try to get a loan, no one's going to want to do business with them. And then the ultimate stigma, and I call it just basically banking suicide, is where you go to the discount window. This is basically going to the Federal Reserve hat in hand and saying, I am absolutely bust. I have no other option. But unfortunately, the market can see that. And then that's like your credit score going from 750 all the way down to 400. You're basically out of business because you will never get the liquidity you need from a market-based source again. So once we understand the risk waterfall, all we have to do is look at some charts and we can determine how much stress is in the banking system and the probability of this banking crisis continuing into the future, and we can also time it to a certain degree. So we went over a chart of these advances, and we know when this goes parabolic, we can look at the banks that are borrowing, and we can assume that they are in trouble. But then we can combine that 
with looking at the overflow into facilities like the BTFP on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. So if we see that going parabolic at the same time, we know there are banks that can not only access market liquidity, but they can't even access the FHLB. So that is when you are really in dire straits. So editor going through a chart of the PTFB right now, and we can see that it has gone parabolic and it has stayed there. It has not come down. Now, if we look at a chart of the discount window, we can see that that went straight up, but it's come back down. So what does this mean? How can we interpret this? Well, we know that the banking crisis is far from over because of the chart of the advances of the FHLB is still extremely high and going even higher. We can also combine this with the PTFP being extremely high and it hasn't come down yet. Now we'll have to see if this goes higher or not. But how we kind of time when we get the next wave of this crisis is by combining those two charts with a chart of the discount window. And once you see that shoot up, you know that over the next few weeks, over the next few months, it's very likely that you see more of these banks go bust, possibly taking us into an environment that is very similar or even worse than the GFC. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.